Just wanted to show you guys what it looks like when you take the cap off of this part of the socket back here where your focus wire is going to go down into. Not sure if I'm getting this where you can see it really well. But uh, the wire actually goes in, let me get my little pointer here. The wire actually goes in right here and it goes down in there and this crimps onto it. And when you close the secondary cap down, it clips on the side and a little piece of plastic goes down here and wedges against this side. And when it wedges against that side, it puts pressure on that and it holds your, your uh, focus wire down in there. And if you follow that, that's all connected right there to this piece of metal. And eventually, down in there, it goes, you can probably see there, it goes through to this right here. This is where your focus pin is on your tube. So that pin right there is for your focus on your tube. And um, I don't know why there's metal right here on this side, to be honest. It's not connected to anything on any of these pins. Uh, the only thing I can figure is either they make several of these for a different model and maybe the cap, the way the cap goes on, the focus wire comes down in the middle somehow because this actually looks like contact points in here for something. I'm not quite sure what that's for. But uh, this one is completely isolated over here, this piece of metal. And it does go through to a pin. About to drop my pointer. Goes through to a pin right there. And that pin is soldered through on the circuit board. And uh, let's see. Find my CRT ground. Yeah, it's connected to ground. That right there is connected to ground. So I'm not quite sure what that's for because as you can see, I'll go ahead and put the cap back on just so you can see. This is the entire cap assembly. And there's a little, see the little part that locks over on this side. And there's a part on the other side that locks over where the square hole is. And you insert it down over top of here. And press it down in place and if you can see these will engage on on this side and on the opposite side over here and you know most of these neck boards are a little different the way this works some of them you have to flip this all up like a big door and then put the focus wire in and sometimes even solder it and then clip the whole door back well this removes like a unit and you don't even have to take it off but if you watch I'll press down and see it engages. Now that's locked in. It didn't make a real big click or nothing. But the more you take these off, sometimes the looser they get. And you can flex in on the plastic slightly. You don't want to break it. But that'll make it lock a little tighter. But that side's locked in. And right down there, that side's locked in pretty good. Let me make sure. Yeah, it's locked over its tab. So that's not going anywhere. So that's locked in place. And this is the top part that you flip. And like I said, that little piece of plastic there wedges down in there, presses against that metal, and gets a good bite on the focus wire. So right now, we can take the focus wire. And let's see if this was going on. Let's see. The chassis is sitting flat there. And if your CRT is in place, your neck board is going to go on like this. So I'm going to try to put it in in such a way that it's not going to be twisting around real bad so this looks like kind of a natural position to set the neck board up in place so I'm going to put it straight down in and see it's already stripped from the factory and I already have it tinned and just to make sure your lead's pretty good and straight insert it down on this model insert it down through this hole and you have to press it kind of firmly you'll feel it go down in there and then it bottoms out you can't push it any farther now it's actually pretty tight like it is but to lock it even tighter, then you close this little lever, push down, and it's locked in place. Won't open up unless you insert a very small bladed screwdriver right there, or something like a tool like that right there or something, and kind of release that clip, and then you can lift it open. But it's got the focus wire in there really good and tight now. So that's our up to 20,000 volt focus wire. It's in place nice and sturdy. And I noticed they also, looks like they have a little retention clip right here. Now, I don't know exactly what that's for because if you bend that wire, I mean, look, it's not going to bend down that far. It's, just, it's not that flexible. 
I don't know if that's supposed to be for, you know, maybe helping to support your G2 wire because your G2 wire plugs right there. Uh, could possibly be it. Let's see. Get our G2 wire up here. Here's our G2. Could possibly be to route the G2 wire and then plug it on there. But see, it's it's not even it's not even tight enough to hold the G2 wire unless there's a piece of plastic been broken off there doesn't look like it so like I say I mean I think sometimes they design these to where the different pieces of plastic could be used in a couple of different configurations uh, maybe this top piece of plastic somehow is used with another one and the focus wire or the G2 G2 goes through there and fits tightly and somehow it helps hold it you know I'm not sure but it does look like it's made to hold a, a wire could be to help hold the ground wire because you have to connect the ground right here there's a pin there to connect the ground to the uh, the neck board. Uh, maybe it's made so you can route it somewhere around and that'll just kind of help hold it and take the tension off and you can plug it on there because uh, it would probably be a slightly thicker gauge than that. But anyway, just to finish up what we're doing, let's see. Natural position would be to put the neck board up like that where the chassis is sitting down below us. So I just like to kind of Go ahead and route our G2 wire in such a way that it won't be too badly kinked. So that right there feels like kind of a natural position once you had it in place behind the tube. And we just plug it. We got the old glue residue off of here. Now there is a still a little bit at the base of this pin, but I didn't try to scrape too much away because it's gunked around near a resistor and all, and I didn't want to really mess with it much and you know crack a solder joint on that resistor or pull screen printing off the top of the board because that, that hot melt glue stuff is really pretty sticky once you get it on. Now I could have dug and dug at it and probably slipped with a tool and hit another component and loosened a solder joint or something but you know it's pretty open and you know it's not going to interfere so I'm just going to leave it on there and we just take and plug our G2 wire firmly down and there you go. Focus G2. Got that done. Now this right here plugs back onto the chassis and it's keyed. Let's see if I can back up a little bit. I like to aim the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. But that goes right here. There's a header and there's a small key position, the fifth pin over, and there's a whole lot more than five pins coming from this end, so there's really only one way to plug this. It's got the red wire there on the end, so it plugs pretty much seats straight down. Let me set my net board down before I, I drop it. But see, there's your little key position. Don't know if you guys can see. There's a place there where there's no opening, it's actually blocked off. And there's a missing pin there. Line it up. Press it down on there. Make sure on the right side and the left side that you're not missing a pin and plugging it on incorrectly that could cause a problem because there's voltage on some of these lines and grounds on some of these lines. But that looks like it. We've got that plugged up and our neck board's completely reconnected now except for the grounds. There's a ground that comes off this and sometimes it's sometimes on some neck boards there's two grounds. Sometimes there's just one and it goes down to where the uh, ground is. It's like uh, there's a spring and a uh, ground that goes around uh, the tube itself and there'll be a wire soldered to it and sometimes you can run that ground straight to that some people cut them in half and put a wire nut on them as long as it's, as it's connected to that connection then you've got a ground going to the net board you don't want to hook the net board up without a ground sometimes there's a second one that will come off from the same ground point on the net board and it will go to like the uh, the frame that the chassis mounts to and so if there's two that were connected, make sure you connect them back up, you know, before you fire everything back up. Okay, guys, we're going to reconnect his uh, 
piece of cardboard to the back of his neck board. covers up all your soldering and everything there. It's got some little diagrams of the chassis on it and the neck board and the remote board there with a few little bits of description about the connectors and stuff to help you out. But uh, when I was doing the soldering I had to cut the uh, the zip ties and I want to put some new zip ties on here. His original ones were white so we're just gonna I think I got some yellow ones here, small ones I want to stick back on there. Tell you what I'll give him I'll give him green. And some of these they have uh, they have holes in each corner. This one just has one in that corner and the opposing corner. Sometimes they got it in every single corner. But um, usually I find the the section that doesn't have a component on the opposite side in the way right here, instead of running it through like that way, we'd probably want to run it through like that way because it goes between the two legs of those resistors and there's less PCB board in this direction, so just line your hole up from your cardboard there and uh, just to make it you know look a little bit neater and everything you can uh, make sure that you put the part that actually clicks in and fastens on this side Let's see if I can show you what I'm talking about it's like you want to make it, make sure that parts on that side so you don't see it on the back side all you're going to do is see the loop so we'll push it through on this side And this is all just for looks. You could use you could use loaf bread ties if you wanted to. It don't matter. You don't even have to have those on there actually. Some people say you can get confused. Uh, sometimes people reinstall the wrong cardboard on there and you think you've got one model chassis or uh, neck, uh, neck board and you've got a different one. But anyway, we've got it on there and we're zipping it down kind of tight now. If you can see. set it down for just a second there so I can get a grip on it. And there we got it pretty tight there. See on the back side, back side that's all you see. You just see where it, it loops around and holds it in place. And the actual part that kind of tightens up the, the zip ties on the back side. It's just a little cleaner. And then take you some nippers, cut your excess off. Kind of watch out for your components now because you do have a resistor there. You don't want to cut the leg off of it. So just get kind of snug up on it. There it is got that finished and then when it's on the monitor all you'll see is just the just the back side that little bit of green looks pretty good that way so we put the other one on and finish that up so we'll put this one on the same way so that the the bands kinda going up and down up and down on it instead of left and right There it is. Got it done. From the other side, you can see got so many wires in the way, and well, I've got my camera. Let me zoom back a little bit. But you can see, looks pretty good. Nice and neat. Now. 
trying to figure out which tube I want to test this on because you have to have the uh, the right readings on your vertical and your horizontal uh, yokes for your your tube. Uh, your yoke has to be compatible and uh, if it's not then it won't work with the chassis and I have heard there's a risk of possibly damaging your chassis. Um, you measure, uh, like get an ohm meter and you measure the resistance on your uh, horizontal and your vertical yoke wires and uh, they're split off into two pairs on this chassis. You've got like a vertical that plugs on here and right down in there by the flyback there's the horizontal and they're split into two for the original tube this came with. I think most of my tubes are still together like a set of four wires but it's pretty easy to find the horizontal. They're usually slightly thicker and they're almost always red and blue but don't trust the colors. You can take and uh, set a meter like a multimeter to ohms and take a reading off two of the pins if you have like a four pin connector and if you don't get a reading or anything switch to uh, you know another pin move the probe to another one of the four pins and when you start getting a reading then you know that you're dealing with either the horizontal coil or the vertical coil you're not going to get a reading if you've got it on the wrong wires of the four and um, you'll get you know one reading on two wires it'll usually be like the blue and the red and it'll be kind of a lower ohm reading and uh, then you measure the other two wires and um, they can be different colors I've seen different I know greens one of them I can't remember green and orange maybe um, but there's different colors. Sometimes you'll see grays and stuff like that. Sometimes you'll see a lot of black, you know. They might all be one color possibly. Um, but, you know, take readings until you get one ohm reading off of, uh, you know, your horizontal and your vertical. And you'll know which one's your horizontal because it's always lower. And uh, that has to be close to the original tube that the chassis was on, like if it's a medium res, it's going to be different than, you know, the the readings you take off a yoke for a standard res probably. Unfortunately, I have like three standard res tubes and yokes, and I only have one that is a medium res, and it's a totally different model chassis. I don't know if the reading on it would be the same or not. Um, somebody in the uh, Bring Your Own Arcade Controls forum, I think he goes by Grant Spain. He's pretty knowledgeable on there from what I've I've seen. He told me that uh, a Hantrex Polo, uh, which I have in my Mortal Kombat 2, should be compatible with the U5000. And he told me the ohm readings to look for, I think it was uh, 2 ohms for horizontal and 5 ohms for vertical. Well, the one tube that I already had out of a cabinet, it came from a K7000 series monitor. Um, it read a lot higher than that. I think it was maybe 3 or 3 point something horizontal and maybe 9 point something or 10 vertical and so that was you know going to be probably too high i haven't taken a reading off of any of my other tubes i want to try the reading off of my k7400 monitor since it's a very similar chassis to it but it's standard res only the k7500 is very similar to this except it's medium res only this one came out before those two i believe and it did both resolutions so maybe maybe the yoke in that one you know on that tube maybe it would be compatible so i'm going to take some readings off of that disconnect that chassis and maybe try this chassis on the tube that's in the Mortal Kombat 1 and hopefully you know everything will work out the only thing that's left to do before we do hook this up and uh, you know like make sure we got our grounds connected and everything for the neck board and everything uh, and cap connected properly to the tube the only thing left to do on here is you know like I said we got to move this header here and this is glued in place just like that um, connector on the neck board here so we're going to have to break this glue connection. You can do it several different ways. Sometimes you can just pull up on it. I want to see if I can use these nippers here and just kind of nip at it without hurting any components around it. Doesn't really seem to be working that well. Let me see. I've got a pocket knife somewhere here. See if I can cut through the glue going straight down without damaging the board. Now you have to be stay very good and controlled with a knife when you're doing this. And I imagine you could try to melt it with a soldering iron or something, but I think that would just make a mess.
there's a resistor under there so I gotta be careful okay I think I might be through it now let me see if I can just pry up slightly with my knife and carefully there we go I think we got it oh well <laughs> I was cutting through the glue and it actually come completely loose from the chassis very cleanly that's a nice surprise actually usually once you stick that stuff on it doesn't come off that easy but somebody must have stuck it on when the chassis was dirty and that means it bonded to the dirt more than it did the actual chassis but you can see I was pretty much pretty much cut all the way through it with the knife just about it but we can take that glob off and uh, I might put some more back on but I think he may want to change out and back so I think I'll just inform him if you see this was released as part of a kit as an upgrade I think this was for uh, horizontal upgrade on this chassis but they didn't do the entire kit this resistor and this strip was part of the kit there were some other things you were supposed to change um, I think it might have had even to do over here with the horizontal output transistor I believe this is your hot as a lot of people call it your horizontal output transistor that's a common fail part that can you know pretty much make a chassis useless if it's dead a lot of people replace those when they replace flyback end capacitors that one appears to be working I haven't changed it out uh, I don't believe it was changed according to the way the solder looks on the bottom of the chassis it looks like the original one that was in here and if he would have ordered it I would have changed it uh, but you know this was all we did was just the flyback transformer and the capacitor kit but what you have to do there's just one pin here it's at location TP205 and it has a designation there it says plus 30 volts so I don't know exactly what that pin header was originally for but when you buy this kit you have an orange wire and a brown wire that comes off this strip and right beside this capacitor there's two locations there it had a bridge like a straight wire that used to run between them well you take that little piece of wire out and desolder it and then you solder in the brown near the edge of the circuit board and the orange right behind that beside that capacitor and then you plug this on and depending on how you plug it on this one pin at TP205 it'll uh, help you use either standard resolution or medium resolution now the way it was on it was not doing anything it's like it was just holding itself it was actually plugged into this part right here and there's a little tiny piece of black wire down in there but it's been cut off so it's really for nothing it's just a placeholder kind of you just stick it on right there below the black wire and it just holds its place and the rest of this functions along with the jumper over here to enable 25 kilohertz medium resolution but now we want to change it to 15 kilohertz standard res and we have to plug it on so that you're connecting the white wire to TP205 so that's what we're going to do right now plug it on there and that's all there is to it now if you're just afraid it's going to come off or something like that you can add some more hot melt glue but I think I'll just inform the owner that way if he wants to change back to medium res in the future he can swap it back over and uh, he'll have to swap his jumper pack too but that's pretty much it um, I can't think of anything else that we hadn't really covered like I say we had some bad traces on uh, the connections for these three color transistors here and I really didn't muck with them because I tested them and all the solder connections were reading fine they had good continuity and the more you mess with those there's so much heat for these three color transistors that those traces are just going to lift over time and usually the color transistors will fry and you'll lose a color and you'll have to replace one it's best to go ahead and replace all three of them because you can get all three of them for a couple of bucks probably and it's not that hard to replace them but when you solder them in you want to use a good clean solder and iron and try to do the work real quick you don't want to leave a lot of heat on there because if the traces are already damaged it's just going to make them worse so I didn't want to mess with that because they actually looked like the soldering was good the connections were good the traces were just lifting so I've just been careful not to bump these around a lot and you know break the traces on the other side but they stay protected they do lift but once you got this piece of cardboard there they pretty much do stay protected on this back side well maybe the next thing you'll see is me doing some testing with this if I can find a tube I think is compatible hey guys we're at the back of the Mortal Kombat 1 here and excuse me it's probably a little bit dusty but um this is a Wells Gardner K7400 model chassis. It does only standard resolution, 
but it is very very similar to a U5000. I believe the U5000 come out a little bit before this one and the K7500 which is a medium res only chassis but it looks almost identical to this but most of the mounting locations for the large capacitors and connections and all that is identical from this one as a U5000 and the way it mounts in the tray here is identical so I'm going to remove this chassis and try to test the tube that we've uh, did all the capacitor replacement and flyback transformer replacement on this one so we're going to hook it up and uh, I've already took loose the horizontal yoke wires here's the vertical now on this chassis you can tell the connector has been broken in half this may not be the original tube that went with this chassis anyway but this is originally one connector that had four wires and somebody broke it in half because on this particular chassis you have a double pin connection for the horizontal which is slightly farther apart than a double pin connection for the vertical and that's just to keep you from plugging them into the wrong ones and the connectors here even though these have been broken apart your two horizontal wires your blue and your red usually are slightly farther apart the pins are than on your vertical right here you may not be able to tell it just by looking but there's a slight larger spacing between the two pin connections and uh, if it was a four pin connection it'd be the same way it's just while they're still together there's just a little more space between the two horizontals and kind of keys it so you can hook it up correctly I've already tested the uh, resistance on the uh, two yoke uh, coils the vertical and the horizontal on here and the resistance on the horizontal on this one is about 1.2 ohms on the vertical we've got about 7 ohms and the original tube that was mated with the U5000 chassis that I got from Adidas 1984X the resistance on it I think was reading 2 ohms on horizontal and about 7.5 to 8 ohms on vertical and uh, I'm hoping those are close enough that it won't cause any kind of problem and you can use that chassis with this tube uh, if not it won't work hopefully it won't cause any kind of damage I've tried to uh, talk in the arcade controls forums with some of the other guys and I can't get any definitive answers about what I can and can't do in regards to that but I know if it was really far off like let's say if I had you know five on the horizontal ohms reading and like you know 15 or 18 on the vertical that would probably be pretty bad but these are within one ohm of each other so I'm hoping it'll be okay so we're gonna get this chassis out and we're gonna try to mount the other one in there and uh, we'll have to uh, take and uh, discharge this uh, tube up there where the anode connects make sure we've got that discharged properly so I'm gonna do that off screen or off camera get all this disconnected the neck board and everything and when I get the other chassis connected in I'll probably go ahead and show you what happens when we fire it up okay didn't get it on film but just use my screwdriver here with a heavy gauge wire soldered to it and a uh, alligator clip on the end and it's soldered and taped just like the connection at the uh, bottom of the blade of the screwdriver I've got it clamped on I think I've got it soldered and taped this is soldered and taped and I always just take and clip it on the frame and uh, then put it under the anode cap and try to see if I get a pop and kind of use it to help dislodge the anode cap the anode cap is right there and it comes loose pretty easy so we got that loose we got both our uh, vertical and horizontal wires loose yoke wires like I said and we've got some other things to disconnect like right here this is the decals cable you guys can see I know the light's not too good but you just pull straight up on it kind of wiggle a little bit but don't put too much pressure pop pop loose it doesn't matter which way you connect that it'll connect on either way it won't hurt anything but we've got some other connections we've got to get loose signal wires over there Let's see if I can get those loose those are always hard to do with one hand this is your sink connection here okay I got that one loose this is your colors and your ground red green and blue and ground it's a pretty standard connection on most wells gardeners if this thing could be pulled out a little easier the part that it clips into it's like it really holds these tight and my skin's very dry from working in a textile mill it's very hard for me to grip these and pull them off I'll have to do that one off camera okay we've got those disconnected from the chassis now like I say the large one here holds your uh, your red blue and green color connectors and your ground right there white wire here is your sink and it goes on the second part of the same connector up top it would be 
be back towards the back a few pins there past the little keyed position that's where it connects up and uh, there's a connector right here for the neck board we're not going to disconnect that because this neck board stays with this chassis and there's another connector right behind there it's a little wider and we're just going to leave that connected it connects to the um, remote control board the remote board that uh, you know does your vertical hold and your brightness your contrast all those kinds of things and uh, even though they're probably somewhat compatible, I'm not sure if the wiring is exactly the same on these. They look similar, but they've got a different part number. And uh, this one doesn't have one pot. Uh, I think it's horizontal hold. There may be uh, some type of uh, adjustment on this chassis for that. I'm not 100% certain right now. But we're just going to leave the remote board connected to this one. Set this chassis down the bottom of the cabinet. And we'll use the remote board that's with the uh, U5000. Okay, here's our connector for our power. This is for AC power. you got AC on the uh, two outside lines there. The black and the green in the center is a ground. So we're going to disconnect these. Press in on the tabs on each side. Kind of wiggle it. Uh, pull up. There you go. And this is actually an extension. This connector didn't originally come in this cabinet. Uh, when I installed this Wells Gardner K7400, there's originally a K7000 series in here and it had a bad tube. And I ended up buying this whole monitor from a fellow. And instead of using the old chassis, which is the original, I used this tube and chassis the way the guy gave it to me. And I'm thinking about putting the old K7100 back in here because I have done a complete recap to it. And I would like to keep this Mortal Kombat 1 all original. And this chassis could also be used in my main cabinet project. Uh, it does not require an isolation transformer. Neither does the U5000 that we're about to put in here. But this monitor, I mean, excuse me, this cab has an isolation transformer down here. And uh, it's just not required for certain monitor chassis. And the one that came in here, the... K7000 series does require it. So just to kill two birds in one stone, I, I may very well put the original K7000 series back in here since I'm going to have this chassis out and I may keep, the, keep this out and use it with my main cabinet. That way I won't have to install an isolation transformer in my main cabinet. Uh, so we got that connection loose. Like I said, this connector was not original to this. Somebody in the forums made that for me and it's just a an extender off of this. This was the original connection that would not fit. This is made to fit on the K7000 and uh, we do need to leave it on though because it's the same type of connector that's on the U5000. And we can gently pull the neck board back right now. Let's see if I can get this on camera here. Try to grab it near the center and I'll try to wiggle it like up and down slightly and it shouldn't take much pressure. You just don't want to bend the pins. There it comes, it's off. Lower it easy. And there's our neck board. And this is uh, an exact identical duplicate of the one that we're about to test in here. The one that um, is on the U5000 is the same model. It's a P719-I on the sticker there it denotes. A lot of people have said the P71-I is not the original netboard for a U5000, but that's what's on that one in there. And a lot of people on the forums have come across ones that have this netboard. They claim it is not supposed to be the original, but it sure seems to work. Uh, the only work I've done on this whole chassis since I've had it is put those three new color transistors on there. And that's uh, in a, another video that I've made. Um, you can kind of see right there, uh, a few clips back, we were talking about the focus wire coming out of there that little retention clip. Well you see the way it is on this one. It comes out it circles around and comes back down and I guess it helps take a little stress off that so it doesn't pull it out. We may very well connect that one that way on the other one. It's just this is such a hard to bend wire. I didn't want to risk breaking it on the inside of the wire but uh, we may do the other one that way since this is this is probably the way it was originally supposed to be. There's your G2 wire on this one right there connected. Um, there's your negative connected on there. We're going to have to disconnect that. That goes following it back right here behind this label. It goes back up here and somebody's got a little twist tie installed there. It's twist tied in with some other wiring there. Your yoke wire is coming from your tube and it goes all the way up there. If you can see this ground on the tube right up there, that's where it's soldered in. 
but that you always have to have a negative or a ground wire connected to your neck board. It's very important. So we're going to disconnect that. See if we can just pull up on it. it. Should disconnect pretty easy. There we go. Got that disconnected, and we'll connect that to the new neck board on the U5000. And I'm thinking that we're done now. Okay, chassis is ready to come out. Everything's disconnected. Okay, we have the K7400 chassis out. All we're left with here is the bare tube, the frame, and the tray for the chassis. And I'll just show you most of the connections. When you have one bare like this, I'll show you most of the connections here that you're dealing with. Um, this right here is your decals. And it'll always be coming from a coil. This is like a decals coil that's installed on the tube all the way around the monitor. And you can see there's a zip tie there over there in that other area you see another zip tie and this goes up kind of makes a circle around the entire tube and this use this is used to degauss the CRT this connector goes on and it goes on in either fashion it doesn't matter which way you plug it on it does the same thing and uh, you just gotta make sure you plug it up to the correct degauss position on your chassis um, you got of course the end of your tube here where your pins are that connect to your neck board. These are all your neck board pins on the end of the tube and uh, you've got a ground connection. I pointed that out a minute ago now. It looks a little confusing right there. They've got these just twisted together to get them out of the way. There's just one wire tie on there and they've wire tied the ground that goes to the neck board with the uh, horizontal and vertical deflection yoke connections. Now this is your ground, it plugs onto the neck board. Just pretend like that little mess isn't there. You follow that wire on back. It goes all the way back to a grounding kind of a strap that's made in onto the tube. It's tied in at the four corners of the, the uh, bracket or whatever that's holding the front of the tube together. It's bolted and connected to the front of the tube and that connects into your brackets on your cabinet. Okay, and then the other two connections, like I said, you've got, this is for your horizontal deflection yoke. That's the yoke on your tube. It goes around the neck of the tube, and you're actually dealing with two coils there. This one's your horizontal, they're almost always red and blue. The other one's your vertical, sometimes it's a thinner gauge wire. And these are uh, red, I mean, uh, excuse me, green and uh, yellow. And those are pretty common. You will see other colors. Uh, the vertical is the worst about having other colors on tubes. Sometimes tubes will not have colors for any of those wires or they'll have totally different cover colors than these. But uh, coming off the tube, that's pretty much all your connection that you have to deal with coming off of a tube. The only other connection for our chassis here will be the power connection here and the signal wires right here this is coming from the game boards actually it gives you your red green blue your ground and your sink just want to show you real quick and <clears throat> don't pay attention to my old drink box cardboard this is sitting on we're just trying to keep from scratching the table but this is the K7400 that I just took out of the monitor and it is very 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 similar to the one we just recapped this is the U5000 if you notice the neck boards they're almost completely identical. That's the one we just capped. Here's the other one. They're both P719-Is. So they're, you know, they have all the same capacitors, same resistors, everything's identical. The only thing I've done on this K7400 that makes this look slightly different is I put new transistors on here for the colors. And those I did have to be very careful because I have the same problem with this one as on his, which is lifting traces. I did not reinstall the little heat sinks on there which I could come back and do that. You see neck boards with and without them. It's probably a good thing for me to put those back on here. His still have the heat sinks on his color transistors, if you can see there. They're not much. They're just some little metal that just kind of slides down, snaps down on there. Certain uh, manufacturers will put a little bit of thermal paste on there between the transistor and the heat sink. On the chassis, everything is pretty much identical. You've got a few variances here and there. Um, a few capacitors on one that's not on the other, a few resistors on one that's not on the other. You got some some uh, pots, potentiometers that are on one that isn't on the other. Like this one, I was telling you the remote board. Uh, let's see. 
this particular pot right here is not installed for the other remote board. This is horizontal hold and the reason that it's missing off the other one, it's just an empty space, is that on this chassis you've got a pot right there for the horizontal hold and it does the same thing, it's just not remotely controlled. I guess they think that once you get that adjusted it's not going to be something you have to mess with a lot. But um, supposedly improvements have been made on this chassis design over the U5000. Um, less problems with these supposedly. Uh, like I told you that this right here was part of a horizontal kit that you could buy to put in there. So this resistor, uh, you have to change the position of a connector right there. That connector has to have a position plugged in so this white wire is connected to a pin coming off the chassis and that has to be done to enable 15K standard resolution and you have to bolt this right here where that nut is you have to bolt that to a grounded place on the chassis frame so we'll have to do that before we turn it on and you have to take that jumper right there and move it from this position which was for medium resolution to this position for standard resolution and if you look at this same spot on the other chassis on the K7400 you see that the place for them to mount is still there there's still holes and designations and screen printing and everything for those two connections but all you see is a single wire coming from one position here and jumpering over to another position down there and uh, that's because you don't need to change this from standard to medium res they just have that one location jumper that must be for a certain connection to uh, enable standard res and that's all that this chassis runs at and when you uh, get a K7500 I think about the identical thing is in place except for you probably have a wire like that connected to a pin header or two that would have been right here for this uh, medium res connection but we'll go ahead and stick the uh, U5000 in get everything connected back up okay we have all our connections connected up to the U5000 chassis that we repaired everything's ready to fire up um, the one extra connection for this that wasn't on the other chassis if you can see right back there that was for that vertical sweep kit I think I've referred to it as a horizontal repair kit for this but uh, I was just getting mixed up because there was three repair kits and uh, one of them I actually did a partial repair to myself that was in a a service kit or a bulletin thing that they sent out you know one of the three kits that were popular for these U5000 chassis and it had to do with those horizontal transistors and I was getting mixed up so if I said horizontal uh, in reference to this little resistor that's mounted on this uh, little strip here um, then I was incorrect this is for vertical sweep this is one of the repairs that was for the vertical sweep and it has that connector right right there may not be focusing right there on you but that connector right there has two different positions it can possibly install it on and uh, right now we have it for the 15 kilohertz uh, standard resolution mode but uh, that has to be mounted to the uh, the plate for the chassis or you know the frame of the one it just have to you know you have to mount it to something that's grounded and uh, we've done that we've got all the other connections connected neck boards on got the neck board on everything's ready to fire up so we're just crossing our fingers right now and we'll get the camera around to the front of the cab let you see the results uh, we do want to keep an eye on this make sure nothing goes pop because when you install a cap kit if you get one in backwards you could pop the capacitor and you have to do a repair but I'm real careful with that I don't think that'll be a problem I just hope everything else turned out okay because we really did a whole lot to this chassis okay we're about to fire up the Mortal Kombat 1 for the first time and see if everything turns on and goes as planned got the remote board right here this is for the chassis that we just installed the U5000 um, I just got it draped to the front with its wires hanging back to the chassis on the back my old remote remote board for the K7400 is still in place on the bracket it mounts to but I disconnected the, the wiring on it when I took that chassis out and I had said I was going to just leave it in the bottom of the cab well I actually took it out so I could show you guys the differences uh, between it and the U5000 while I had it on the kitchen table in the next room I'm going to go ahead and fire this up hopefully everything will come on it will take a good little bit of adjustment probably to get everything looking right but hopefully we'll get some display and nothing will go boom or catch on fire so we got her plugged up so here's the moment of truth Oh, 
we got high voltage. See if we're getting a display on the front. It's not uncommon to have to turn your screen voltage up to get something to light up on the screen. I hear high voltage, so we know that's working. There we go, we're bringing it in. The, fo the focus is out, so we got to bring the focus in. Yeah, it's starting to come in there. Just take some fine tuning. I don't have a mirror right now on me. I might have to grab I've got a piece of mirror laying over there. All right, we got a display. That's good. Let's see. Horizontal position. Oops, I'm moving the wrong one. I'm moving the wrong control. Let's see here. Get our horizontal position there. There we go. Let's see. Our width. Our width's working. No problem with that. Let's see, vertical position. Yeah, vertical position's working. Contrast and brightness. Let's try brightness. Yeah, brightness is working. Contrast. Oh yeah, contrast is really working good. Horizontal hold, which you don't have to mess with that most of the time. Get it once you get it set where you want it. Uh, let's see, got our vertical height. That's working. Just kind of get this adjusted a little bit. Let's see. Get our black out from around the edges there. Looks pretty good. I know it's not filming the greatest to you guys. See if I can put my hand in front of there and get it to focus a little bit more. This camera focuses itself. It's got a little bit of flash going on there. I don't want to turn the light off in the room. Got a backlight on behind us. Now the camera here, it looks maybe just a little washed out, but in person it's not. If you can see how clear it is, it's actually pretty darn clear. See on the text. It's actually looking pretty clear. Probably need a little adjustment on the colors on the neck board, but see my tube is going to be different than his, so if he's already got his adjusted, I may not need to adjust this too much. of the screen in the uh, focus a little bit more but I'm going to cut away from here right now I'll be back in a few minutes I might show you a little more I'm going to fine-tune this and uh, maybe use a mirror to help me out well guys we got it running set up on the MK1 here everything's looking pretty good colors look good focus is good just been adjusting some on the uh, red and green drives and uh, 
all the color adjustments and stuff on the neck board. Sometimes you have to play with those some to get them to look just like you want and some people have different preferences too. But looking pretty good. Going to our adjustments. Here's our red screen. Let me make sure we're focused here. I think we're focused red, green, blue. So you know all your color transistors are working. There's the color bars. Just to those as close as I can get them. I know this this uh, camera is picking up a lot of flash off this CRT, but sometimes you can get away with filming a CRT, and sometimes you can't. It films better if you film in a medium resolution. There's a crosshatch pattern. Everything's looking pretty decent, guys. That focuses off now. It's funny, I zoom in and it focuses. And it'll keep its focus pretty much if I zoom back out. See if I could lose its focus every time the screen changes. I'm zoomed in. And it'll keep its focus, that's what's hilarious. Might just have to put this in manual focus mode when I start filming screens like this. But she's looking pretty good. Success, guys. New flyback, capacitor kit. Everything's installed. Got to get this package back up and back to Adidas. Won't be able to ship it out till Monday. Today's Saturday. It's Saturday night late. So I'm going to leave it running. It's been running about an hour now while I've been doing adjustments and such. Uh, leave it running for another hour or two. Make sure it's good and stable and maybe play a game or two of Mortal Kombat, go through the whole game, make sure it's not flicking out in any way. Hey guys, I just want to make a quick video clip here and just tell you, uh, this is the K7400 chassis that I took out of the Mortal Kombat 1 and it came mated with a very nice tube, no screen burn in it uh, from a guy I bought it from in Georgia and it's been in there for probably over a year now and it's worked great it's not the original chassis or monitor or anything that came in there but um that's the k7400 now this one here this is the uh k7000 series it's actually a k7197 it's the original one and it's actually the original chassis pan that was mounted in the frame of the old tube that i got rid of that came in the mortal kombat one and this has got you know original serial numbers on it to match some of the other things in the cabinet and all and uh, I did a complete cap kit to this when I first got it and I thought it might fix the monitor because it had some problems with uh, you know not enough blue in it and stuff like that and come to find out it was the tube and there was nothing that could be done I tried to rejuvenate it and it didn't improve it so uh, even after recapping it and all what I ended up doing is getting another whole monitor with this K7400 chassis and just using it and I just packed up the uh, K7000 series and uh, just you know kept it as a spare. Well, I thought about changing it back and putting it back in there because it's had a complete cap kit done. It has a good flyback transformer. It may have been changed out. I'm not sure, but it looks really great. The whole chassis actually looks great for you know being 1992 model chassis. And uh, I'd like to put it back in there since I have the K7400 out now, and I think that's what I'm going to do. And uh, this was the uh, K7000 series that was on that old monitor that I got that I was going to use from a Street Fighter 2 for the main cabinet. Well, I think what I'm going to do is just keep this one on reserve since its controls are in the back right there. You can see it doesn't have a remote board. And the K7000 that came out of the Mortal Kombat, it does have a remote board. So it'll be going back in the MK1. And the K7400, it has a remote board and works great.
plus the advantage to using this in the main cab is it does not need a uh, isolation transformer. So that's what's going to go in the uh, main cabinet.